people do think, okay, now I have myopia or something, there is LASIK surgery available. So that would be a better option than contact lenses. What is your take on that? See, absolutely no. Uh, when you talk about contact lenses and glasses, they are only visual aids. Okay. You're not per se actually treating the patient to give them a solution for their primary problem. Whereas LASIK is actually the best and simple uh, outpatient treatment that has uh, now it's it's one of the greatest innovations of science I should say, which is which is actually a boon to everyone to people yes. who have a refractive error. So LASIK is one procedure wherein you know you work at the level of the cornea and reshape uh, you uh, somehow you know reshape the surface of the cornea so as to make the light rays ultimately fall on the retina. Okay. So it it is a very safe procedure provided again. Uh, the you have a lot of uh, you have to take a lot of precautions uh, the proper preoperative workup uh, and if the patient uh, falls in the particular category where uh, lasik can be performed uh, in a very uh, you know nice manner uh, without any problem then uh, uh, absolutely it is a very good procedure which is actually the treatment for the refractive error okay. so far the spectacles and contact lenses whatever we have discussed they are not the treatment they are only visual aids whereas your lasik is actually the treatment for the Correct. refractive error Correct. So absolutely it's a very safe procedure and what we do is we have the cornea, uh, okay. what we do is we actually lift the corneal flap and then we apply the laser at the bed. Uh, once the superficial layer is removed, we have something called as the bed, the stromal bed. So we apply uh, the laser beam on the stromal bed, we reshape it and then again we put the flap back. Okay. So it's almost like you know a 15 minute OPD procedure, walk in and walk out. Okay. So no, no inpatients. No, 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 no absolutely you don't, you don't require any, uh, you don't require any, uh, I mean admission for okay. it. It's absolutely an outpatient procedure. Now what is the age criteria for this stuff? Yeah, age criteria, see we have to understand the eyeball growth, no, the eyeball starts growing and uh, we uh, assume that uh, the change of refraction or the change of refractive error gets stabilized by the age of 18 years. Even otherwise, see, as far as the eyeball growth is concerned, overall we generalize it at 18 years. Okay. But strongly, you know, depending on the individual, sometimes the power may keep fluctuating even till the age of 20 or 21. That uh, strongly you have to keep track of the patient's uh, refractive history over the over a period of every six months. Okay. So once you have found out that the power has stabilized and the patient has crossed the age of 18 years uh, and there has not been uh, huge uh, you know, variations in the refractive error in the past six months, uh, then the patient becomes an ideal candidate for uh, the procedure of LASIK. It works well uh, best between the ages of 18 to 21, I should say. LASIK per se, you have to understand that it corrects only the, predominantly whatever we do, corrects only the distant vision. Myopia. Myopia or hyperopia. See, okay. we have uh, some amount of dioptric, uh, you know, the spectrum where it works be best, we say, between minus 1 to minus 10 diopters as far okay. as myopia is concerned. Hyperopia, say 1 to 8. Astigmatism, again, till 8 uh, diopters of cylinder. So, but beyond that, if you have to do LASIK, you have to take precautions and go about the LASIK procedure. And uh, do they do it on the same, uh, both eyes on both the same? Both eyes uh, is done at the same sitting. Same it's an sitting. absolutely safe procedure. We are not actually uh, going into uh, the in-depth of the eye. It is only a surface procedure, surface ablation we do on the cornea. So, it is best done, uh, both the eyes we do at the same sitting. Okay. And you said it is done from 18 to 21 is the ideal age, yeah. depending on all yeah. your things. 18 to 21, that is because... Uh, uh, LASIK per se corrects the person for distant vision, okay. be it hyperopia or myopia or astigmatism. By any way, by the age of 40, what happens is we have something called as the natural lens within the eye that starts aging. So once the lens starts aging, that is the time when the near vision starts receding and what you call as presbyopia. Okay. So any way near vision needs uh, start uh, occurring in a patient by the age of 40 or beyond 40, so uh, at that point of time, anyway, you have to wear glasses. So what is the so use? So what is the use, use uh, when you're going to do it at 35 or 36? That means he's going to enjoy a life independent or less dependency on glasses only for four. Months. Okay. So it works best between 18 to 21. Yeah. Okay. So that they cannot, they do not need to be dependent on the glasses. Yeah, exactly. And you have to understand one more thing. Last, we do not uh, like motivate people for LASIK saying that you get rid of glasses. Again, we uh, reaffirm and we uh, uh, again we try to convince the patient saying that LASIK is done only to reduce the dependence on glasses. It is not done to actually get rid of glasses. So if at all, if at all there is a little bit of regression or okay. reoccurrence of power 
or residual power the patient should be always be ready to actually accept that particular uh, you know whatever is a residual error and still going for glasses but the glasses are not going to be you know permanent or they're not going to be that much dependent on glasses like what they were before okay so once you have done it in this age group whatever you are recommending yeah. so they do not need to wear glasses for is it permanent the lasik surgery then after that they don't have any problems with refractive errors that is for uh, as far as whether it is permanent or not it depends on the eye see okay. at yes, that okay. particular yeah, okay. it is highly individualized okay. at that particular point of time how much ever is a refractive error and going through the natural history of the patient seeing to that the power has not fluctuated grossly over over the past you know few six months okay. we try to actually neutralize the power if at all that particular eye is a little bit of residual growth is there it is not going to be huge so for that particular residual error they should be like uh, open to the idea of wearing glasses as and when required so whether it is permanent or not uh, uh, around 10 to 15% of that uh, particular thing depends upon the individual and his eye and otherwise still 40 you can be okay. independent of glasses you can reduce your dependence on glasses to a larger extent okay then coming back to this uh, lasik surgery so is it uh, you said it's just an opd basis yeah. they can do yeah, it and absolutely. both eyes are done and i think yeah, everybody yeah. would be really interested to hear about that now about the kids and children watching tv and what always being on the computer what do you think is eye strain what do you see in your clinic is it due to eye strain do you see a lot of patients because of this see whenever predominantly they are in front of uh, the comp or like uh, doing a lot of those video games and uh, when they are overstraining uh, their eyes so what really happens is especially in front of computers we do get a lot of uh, children who come with redness uh, irritation okay. watering uh, and uh, to some extent we tell them like you know even for even people who are in the it sector always glued to the system all the time you have to take certain precautions uh, in the sense like you have to maintain a distance of uh, say around 40 cm between the system and uh, your uh, particular posture where you are sitting okay and uh, something there is something called as a blink rate as far as the eye is concerned the normal blink rate is around 15 to 20 times per minute okay when you are so much engrossed with uh, some near work like uh, you know watching the computer or uh, playing video games what really happens is Uh, children do not even blink correct when you are not blinking that means you are depriving the eye of its uh, lubrication of its uh, lubrication is primarily there only to give you know moisturizing effect to the eye so it is almost that for 3 hours 4 hours you are depriving the eye of its moisturizing effect so uh, uh, what happens so there will be lot of dryness so what we call as dry eye syndrome or computer vision syndrome so that comes with a lot of irritation you know say paradoxical watering may be there okay. and uh, uh, there will be redness so uh, we try to counsel them saying that they have to of course take certain precautions uh, more, you know uh, optimize the blink rate between 15 to 20 and shift their near gaze at the end of 40 minutes to 1 hour to a distant object uh, and so consciously, consciously you, have you to consciously you have to do that yes. if at all you are occupationally you know prone to or habitually prone to a lot of near work correct so and you have to like have a properly rested spine ergonomically modified chairs help you in that so like that if you take precautions then obviously that will not be an issue many people do moisturize their eye through artificial eye drops and other things is it if you're going to habitually get, getting addicted to such medications per se i would say it is not advisable unless and until you have been diagnosed of a particular disorder which is uh, to do with the tear film or dry eyes and if the practitioner has actually asked you to put uh, okay. so, uh, such medications absolutely no contraindications per se self treatment and self medication is uh, not advisable especially for a sensitive organ like that's right that's right because organ. all the medications yeah. no all the medications come yes. with some amount of uh, uh, preservative in them okay yeah all medications come with some amount of preservative in them so unless and until it is warranted it is better that uh, we avoid uh, getting into such situations where we get habituated to such medications